Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old pass of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious word of sovereign grace. Here's this week's message. Appreciate the prayers that I know that have gone forth um, from my particular situation and, and I sense that uh, God is hearing those prayers and I, I feel s some relief and I'm, I'm thankful for that and uh, uh, our God is good and our, our God hears our prayers and as a few, I remember a few weeks ago we were talking about the subject of fasting and one of the things that was included in the fast or the purposes of the fast was to, to re release people from bondage and I had the idea to think that don't we all pray for our loved ones that God would deliver them from, from bondage or from circumstances that are not godly and deliver them into the right way. Absolutely, that's why we pray. And when we pray, we should pray believing that God hears our prayers and that he will answer, he'll, he'll give us that which we ask for if it's in accordance with his will. So pray for me I, as I stand before you this morning that the Lord would give, lead my mind. Uh, even though I've felt some relief and of some of the pressure that I've been under, uh, my mind has still been preoccupied with a lot of those things that are of the world and have very little time to meditate. When you're laying in bed thinking about what you have to do the next day at work, uh, it kind of takes away from where I would like to be. I, I, I firmly believe that we should have a time set aside, I believe early in the morning when the, when the house is quiet, a time to, to study, to look at the Word of God and to pray and, and to reflect. Um, but I trust that, that we can find our way back to the position where when we lay down at night, we're thinking about the Lord and we're we wake up, we're thinking about the Lord. Uh, that's a good place to be. Uh, to meditate on His on His goodness, His mercies. Uh, I don't think that we realize how great the mercy of God is uh, till we get a, an idea of our sin nature and how dark it is. Last week we tried to speak on a little bit about regulating our sin nature. And that's our primary responsibility that God has given us in our gospel calling. He's given, equipped you with the whole armor of God. He's equipped you with, with his word. And he's equipped you with his Holy Spirit. You have all the tools you need to exercise in the things of the Spirit of God. Um, to overcome and bring under your body, uh, bring your body under subjection. And to overcome, we can be more than conquerors. That's what he talks about in one place. He says we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And once a once a um, and we're in a war. There's no doubt about it. It's not the warfare of Isaiah 40 that uh, Isaiah talks about. That war has been fought and won by the Lord Jesus Christ. He's forever settled the. The reality that he's he's paid, he's uh, defeated the devil, he's risen victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and he has uh, attained eternal redemption for all of his people. That's a done deal. What is not a done deal, and and where our responsibility lies, is the warfare that we have to fight, and that's going to be a lifelong thing. 
So we, we realize we're in a warfare, and we realize through the grace of God and the tools that the Lord gives us, we can conquer uh, the enemy. And in one place he says, flee from, uh, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Sometimes that resistance is in, a, in form of a spiritual battle. So, but once we conquer, then just like in, in the natural, when a, one nation conquers another, the next thing they do is occupy. Uh, you know, the occupation of the, uh, in World War II, America occupied uh, West Germany, Russia occupied East Germany. So there, when the conquering is done, there's some occupation that takes place. And the Lord did in one place tell us to occupy till I come. So we all have a place in the kingdom of God, and we need to be praying that God would help us to see and understand that place that we have in the kingdom. You may think, well, what I do is not very important. Well, it, very, it, it, it is. I want to tell you one thing. Just your very presence here is an encouragement, not only to myself, but also to the other members. When we, when we have one another, um, we have something. Uh, but we all have a place in the kingdom of God. We all need to be walking and filling that place in the kingdom and occupying. And not just for a little while, but until the Lord comes. It's, uh, there's no discharge in this war. You know, in the, in the United States Army, you serve so much time and you get a discharge. Well, there's no discharge in this war. We'll be fighting it until the day that we pass over into glory. And Brother Lloyd sitting there shaking his head or nodding in agreement with that. Just because we, we may be on the western slope of life does not necessarily mean that, um, well, uh, the, uh, Solomon addresses that in Ecclesiastes 12. Uh, remember now thy creator in, in the days of thy youth when the evil days come not, <laughs> right? But the time is coming. I mean, they don't, the devil does not relent. Um, but we do have to, we do need to resist him and we need to pray for grace. Um, I woke up this morning and Isaiah chapter 55 came to mind. So I'll, I want to turn over there for a minute and, and discuss this. Uh, if the Lord give us grace to be able to discuss it. One of the things that we see in this chapter uh, is the distinctive decreed voice of God. You've heard me talk about that before and I'm gonna, I'll give you an, an example. I'm just going to um, turn to Deuteronomy 13 just real quick. I'll, I'll try not to be jumping all over the place. Over here in Deuteronomy, the Lord's giving the commandments to the children of Israel. <clears throat> and he says, um, You shall walk after the Lord, in verse 4, he says, You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Now, there in this, in this particular place, and there are several others where the, we're commanded to obey the voice of the Lord. Okay? And you remember when uh, Moses came before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh says, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? I, I will not obey the voice of the Lord. Well, then, that's, that falls under that particular voice, um, also, I think it's compiled into the written word, the things that, that God had spoken uh, to the prophets to pen for us. That falls under the category of the will of God's command, which we know uh, that it's God's will, thou shalt, not, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now that's, that's God's will. Thou shalt have no other gods before, before me. But we know that people do have other gods, uh, whether, whether it be covetousness, whatever it might be, whatever type of idolatry, people do have other gods. Uh, it's God's will that we don't bear false witness, but people do bear false witnesses. 
So what you have here is the will of God's command where if you're obedient to that command, uh, <clears throat> there's a reward that will follow, and that, that may be in the form of peace or comfort. But if we disobey that voice, then there's, there's a chastening that will, will follow. Uh, so I just want to give a couple examples of how that it's the will of God and wherein we have freedom. God does not force, a, a force his word upon us. Uh, he desires that we obediently uh, and, and willingly follow his commands and precepts. Uh, just like he said in Deuteronomy, that they should obey the voice of God. Now, if it were automatic that we should obey the voice of God, then why the instruction that we should do it? It, it, that instruction would be unnecessary if the application in Isaiah 55 we, we've got to we've got to make some discernment and that this is a different uh, distinction here and I think it's a, what I'm going to call the decreed voice and that's like the voice uh, John 5:25. behold the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. It doesn't say they might live or could live or should live. It says they shall live. That's that's a the decreed voice of God. Uh, I mean, it's going to happen. You know, God speaks and it comes to pass. That's the decreed voice of God. Uh, just like in John 5 and a little on, 28, 29, when he says, the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And they're all going to come out. That's that's a different voice that's being spoken of than the one that we're commanded to obey. So there's there's blessings in obedience, and and there's chastening and disobedience. And God does desire us to serve Him willingly. Uh, I don't believe that uh, that we're made robots. Uh, I don't believe that we're puppets on a string. I believe that we serve our God freely and we serve our God willingly. And those are the blessings <clears throat> that we uh, we receive when we take those things that God has given us. Uh, re recognizing the duality of our, of, of our natures. We have the edemic nature. We have the spiritual nature or the divine nature. So God wants us to be obedient, to use his tools that he's equipped us with to overcome. So I'm going to start reading in, in Isaiah 55, verse 1. He says, Ho, or pay attention, everyone that thirsteth, and come to the waters. Who is it that's thirsty for the things of God? Well, I know the world's not thirsty for the things of God. The Lord said in one place, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, the natural man does not hunger and thirst after righteousness. The natural man does not desire the things of the Spirit of God. They're not discernible to him. Uh, he can't understand them. He doesn't have their foolishness to him. So, but he says, everyone that thirsts. Now, so I know that some people make an application of this to say, see, everyone can come and drink of the waters. But it's only the thirsty that are going to drink. Now, you've, you've heard the saying before, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Uh, if a, a, a person's led uh, to, to the gospel and he's not thirsty for the gospel, he's not going to drink of it. The good news is that the Lord says, that if we're thirsty, we can come to the waters. And I, I think about that well over in John chapter 4 where the, the Samaritan woman was there. And... The Lord said, give me a drink. She said, sir, the well is deep, and thou hast nothing to draw with. And I think this has an allusion to the living waters of, of Christ. And indeed, the well is deep, but God has equipped us with the ability to draw from that deep well and drink of the waters of life freely. So he says, ho, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters. And we're going to find that this is a water that satisfies. Um, th this is a water that does not need to be purified because it's, I believe it's pure water. You look at Revelation 21 and 
that that uh, river that proceeded from the for, forth from the throne of God, clear as crystal. Now I believe that this is pure water, and it doesn't need to be boiled. It doesn't need to be filtered. It, it's uh, it's pure and it's clean and it's wholesome, and is that which nourishes that which our spiritual man needs. He says, "You come to the waters if you're thirsty." And he says, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Uh, the best things in life truly are free. Uh, I, I believe that the grace of God is free. Now, it, it, it costs the Lord his life. But for you and I, the grace of God is free. But you don't, you can't buy, one of the things that he's saying here, what this, this water, you can't buy it with money. It's not, it's not for sale. All, the, all of the gold and ophir and all of the silver in the world couldn't buy this. It's by the grace of God that we're able to come. And I'm reminded of what he says in, in Psalm 23. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And he restores my soul. And by those still waters, you know, they say that a lamb won't drink from running water. That a, that a lamb will only drink from still waters or water that's not not in the process of running like in a river but we can drink of that water and it can restore our souls because sometimes we our souls get out of the way and sometimes our souls are oppressed some sometimes our souls are depressed uh, but the Lord can restore our souls uh, David said in one place cast me not from the uh, Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. That joy can be and uphold me with thy free spirit. I didn't get that quote exactly right. But we can be restored to the joy of our salvation. We can come and we can drink of these waters that the Lord provides that nourish our spirit man. And it's free. And it, doesn't, it doesn't cost us anything. He says, come ye. Buy and eat. Now, how do we buy if we don't have any money? Well, we buy through obedience. We, we have to be obedient. That's how we make the purchase, is uh, by, by being obedient to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Um, he says, come buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. He says, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Now, I could be sp speaking to myself this morning when I think about this particular text and, and probably most of us. He says, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? In other words, that which is, does not nourish you. I mean, if you're taking your natural resources and, and you're using it in a way that's that's not actually doing you any good. That's what he's saying. Uh, remember one place, he's, uh, one of the writers says it's like putting money in a bag with holes in it. <laughs> you ever felt like that? You get your paycheck and it's just like it just runs it, put it in your pocket and it just runs out and the next thing you know there's nothing there. But but he's he's admonishing us that we we're, we should not be spending our labor, our money, or our time for that which is not bread. And he says, and for your labor for that which satisfieth not. Only the, the Lord satisfies. Uh, only the Lord satisfies, truly. Now, we may gain temporary satisfaction from some of the things that we do in the world, but it's fleeting and, and it's vain. But... As you've heard me say many times, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Uh, but the things that the Lord give us will satisfy us. That, that the things that we find in his word, I mean truly satisfy us. Because peace and comfort, uh, those, those, are, those are wonderful things that the Lord bestows upon us through his grace. Uh, you, can't, you can't buy peace and you can't buy comfort out in the world, you, it's just not there. And, and, all, and the truth of God, you think about the fact that we have uh, truth. The Lord tells us in one place to buy the truth and sell it not. In other words, 
buy it and hang on to it. Uh, don't don't sell out the truth if because you know I guarantee you there are there are temptations all around us where we could sell out the truth. I had an incident yesterday. We went to Home Depot and I bought some. I'm uh, building a new shed in my backyard, and I I had a bunch of stuff in there that I purchased, and I noticed that uh, she, she handed me the receipt and said, "Have a good day." And I said, no, "Let's look at this again because I think you've undercharged me." And uh, she did. She undercharged me by twenty eight dollars. I could have sold the truth there, uh, but the, the truth is that we're to be honest in the sight of God. I could have sold the truth and, and just kept that to myself and walked out. You know, but I find that that happens to me quite often. Um, and I don't know if it happens, if it happens to me as often as it does, where we have to check and say, hey, wait a minute, I didn't give you enough money. It's probably happening to you too. So the thing is, don't sell the truth. Uh, don't sell out just to think, well, you know, it's the big store, it's the big corporation. They can, you know, they can absorb it. You know, we could try to justify it all kinds of different ways. Buy the truth and sell it not. Uh, we have a, a great responsibility with this truth uh, to be obedient to it and, and to be good stewards uh, of the truth of, of the truth of God and of the grace of God. So, but he asks, <clears throat> wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, uh, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me. That means pay close attention. Hearken. You know, the Lord says those that come to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Not half-hearted. You know, you know. sometimes we watch our children um, and they just put a little bit of effort into the things that we tell them to do. But we need to, as we grow, and that's one of the interesting things about the military is they teach you details and you become disciplined and you become can learn to become diligent uh, but we need to, to hearken diligently uh, and diligently seek God and diligently listen to what it is he has to say that's the same application can be made from parents to the children you need to pay diligent attention to what your what your parents are teaching you 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 may think uh, uh, you may think that your mom and dad are, are being mean or whatever, but the fact of the matter is that they love you and they want the best for you and they they have the responsibility to bring you up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And uh, sometimes, you know, what what's that saying about a teenager, uh, about they know everything or they think they know everything? Um well, you know, they may think they know everything, but they don't. Even at my age, sometimes I think I know some things, and I really don't. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we have to rely upon our parents to guide us and instruct us. They're charged by God for our, our welfare and our well-being, and, uh, and God will hold the parent accountable. God is not mocked for what a person sows, or what a man sows, that shall he also reap. So... Anyway, we, we trust the Lord to guide the parents, and, and uh, if the parents are not diligent in their, in their responsibilities and their duties, the Lord will take care of that. But he says, You hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. Uh, you know, we like to go over to the, uh, the Furs Buffet over here, and they've got some pretty good food over there. Um, but it's not all healthy. Uh, there, there's some there's some stuff, I, and I, I'm convinced now more than ever that the things that we put into our body are probably contributing to the to the high rate of cancer that we experience. Um, someone told me one time, so if you're eating something and it tastes good, spit it out. Um, we we eat a lot of sugar, and uh, sugar, although it may taste taste good, it's kind of toxic to the body. Uh, things that taste good are not always good for you. But the Lord says, you har he says, hearken diligently unto me and eat ye that which is good. You know that the Lord has promised that he, I've prepared a table for you that you might eat and drink in my kingdom. And the, he's talking about eating 
and partaking of the good things of the word of God, the fellowship of God and the fellowship of the brethren in the church, that's where, uh, that's where we find the good things. And I, I trust that the gospel message that the Lord brings it, it will edify you and strengthen you and encourage you and, and build you up and give, give you the, the courage that we need to go out and spend another week in this wicked world. But uh, you remember that when Elijah was fleeing from Jezebel, we talked about that about a month or so ago, that, that the angel touched him twice and made him eat. He says, rise and eat, for you, you've got to go in the, in the strength of this meat for 40 days. So we, we should come to the house of God expecting to come to, for, for the Lord to feed us because we're going to have to go on the strength of, the, of that meat for another week. Does that make sense to you? And I don't know about you, but I right around Saturday, Friday and Saturday, I start getting hungry again, and I know that I need to be in the house of the Lord, because I know that the Lord has promised that, that we can sit and eat and drink at his table in his kingdom. And uh, what a privilege that is. Uh, that's just like the story of Mephibosheth, you remember that? He was lame because of a fall. And for Jonathan, Jonathan's sake, Mephibosheth was able to sit at the king's table. We have that same privilege, but we have to recognize, uh, we have to recognize that, that, you know, we need to forget about what's out there. We need to prep our hearts in, in singing praise unto our God, for he's worthy of it. And, and we need to pray and, and prep ourselves for the preaching of the gospel and come expecting uh, for the Lord to give us that which we stand in need of. He can feed us. The Lord, the Lord told uh, Peter after he had denied him three times, he said, uh, Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Uh, even as Peter had denied the Lord three times, the Lord had Peter affirm his love three times. And, and it, it, in that, he was t teaching the lesson that it's the purpose of the gospel ministry to feed the sheep that God has created. Never, nowhere does he say uh, feed the giraffes. You know, those, and I, I know a couple of, of preachers that are up there. They're preachers' preachers, probably better suited for a crowd of preachers to be sitting in the congregation to understand what they have to say. Uh, but nonetheless, we're commanded to bring the feeding trough to a level where uh, the sheep and the lambs are, are able to, to eat and, and uh, partake. And I, I trust that by the grace of God that we were able to do that. And uh, it would be ego on my part I know that everybody has an ego, but sometimes, uh, for most of the time, we can keep it suppressed. Uh, but sometimes our ego comes out, and if we want to use a word that's that long uh, and nobody understands it, what good does it do? It doesn't do anybody any good. And I, I think that I'm guilty sometimes of perhaps using words um, that go over the heads of the people, and for that I ask you forgiveness, but we need to be able to speak plainly. We need to search out acceptable words. Uh, I know that some subjects, just when I was uh, trying to describe the, uh, the situation of this sister that was part of the occult and some of the things that she mentioned, um, I wasn't going to repeat the details of that because I, I don't think it's necessary. I'll let your imagination guide you in that, but uh, just Make sure you keep your imagination in check. Don't let it go too far. Uh, we try to we try to talk about delicate subjects sometimes, even in the presence of children. And and uh, you know, if whatever gets uh, some of these subjects, we talk about husband and wife and and their their conjugal duties and things like that. I don't know if you got if any of you got hit up on the way home by your children asking what that meant. Uh, if you did, well, it's time to answer the question. Um, I, I remember several years ago when uh, our children were younger, uh, some older boys had 
my oldest son, when he was probably about five or six years old, had him, him and another little girl cornered in a stairwell, and <clears throat> afterwards, uh, we had questions to answer, okay, and, and that's the time to do it, and don't put it off, and you need to be straight, e even though it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to do, it's a hard thing to do, don't shirk that responsibility, because I guarantee you, mom and dad, when they come to you with those questions, if you don't answer them, they're going to get the answer off the street. And, and you, you need to be able to guide that uh, guide that answer and give them the proper information and tell them why it is the way it is according to the, uh, the word of the Lord. But he says, You hearken diligently unto me, and you eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Now, that sounds like that's a good fat, you know. Uh, you may, you've heard me say before, I hope you get fat. Well, this is what I'm talking about. Let your soul delight itself in fatness and the, and the good things of God. We, we need to delight. We need to be, uh, we're commanded to be joyous in the Lord. We're commanded to be happy in the, that's not a suggestion, it's a command. Uh, that we be happy in the Lord and that we rejoice in the Lord. And so we can delight our soul in fatness. Incline your ear and come and come unto me. That incline your ear. Turn your ear for whatever you're listening to, whatever you're hearkening, turn, turn away from that and listen to what God has to say. Listen for that still, small voice in that quiet time that we talk about. That you Hopefully you're setting aside a quiet time I think, still think it's best early in the morning while everyone else is still asleep and, and the house is quiet and there's no cars running up and down the street and the television set is not on and and that's the time to do it. But hearken and, and listen. You know, the, Elijah talked about, he said the Lord was not in the whirlwind, he wasn't in the, wasn't in the storm, he wasn't in the earthquake, but he was in that still, small voice. That's what we need to be listening for. That's what we need to hearken to. Uh, that that loud nagging uh, voice that you hear, likely not the Lord. Uh, it's probably the enemy. Uh, that one that that thing that uh, voice that nags at you and and, and uh, tries to push you into things. I believe that the Lord leads His children. We read of some times when the Lord drove the man out of the garden after the after the fall. But the majority, then there are a couple of other times when the Lord drove the money changers out of the temple. But for the most part, the Lord leads his children. And when you have someone that leads, that means that you follow on. So uh, he says, let your soul delight itself in fatness, incline your ear, and come unto me. What does he say in another place? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Isn't that a marvelous thing to think about? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and we, we find him from Genesis all the way through Revelation 22. Uh, he's in there. But you take his, become yoked to him. Take my yoke upon you. Okay, if you know what a yoke is, you had uh, two oxen that were pulling in a field. By the way, he says you're not to yoke an ox and an ass together. Uh, but you have, you have two oxen that are pulling a plow. That there's this wooden yoke between them where they're able to pull the load kind of uh, side by side. Well, we're to walk with the Lord, walk beside the Lord. Isn't that one of the songs that we sing, Walk Beside Me? Uh, we're to be yoked with the Lord and, and take his yoke upon us and learn of him. And when, we're, when you're yoked to someone, let's say like a husband and a wife, you're yoked together, right? You, you begin to learn a lot about each other. And uh, you know each other very well. You can anticipate in certain situations what, you're gonna, what the husband or wife's going to say or what they're going to do. It's because you're yoked together and you walk together. Well, that's what the Lord desires us to do, to, to yoke ourselves with him and to walk with him and learn of him. Uh, 
and, and we, can, we can expect that, that he'll bless us for doing so. Incline your ear and come unto me, hear and your soul shall live. The Lord says in one place, take heed how you hear. That just means just don't believe everything you hear. But I believe that we can trust the word of God. And, and I've, this is the third week that I, in a row that I've said this. Don't believe me. I want you to believe me, but check me out. All right? And it, it, I trust that you do believe me because I, I pray I'm not deceived in my heart, but I don't want you just to get into the habit of just believing everything that someone says. You need to go to this word and check it out. Okay? That, I, I believe that's safe for you. And I need it as well because if I misspeak, I need you to tell me. Brother Keith, you said something that wasn't right. Uh, but it's your, it's your responsibility also. Uh, don't let your ever get in the habit of letting your preacher do all your study for you. Uh, I, I trust that most of you do pick your Bibles up and you do press in. So, But when I said, I want you to believe everything that I say, but check me out. That's what I mean by that. Check me out. Incline your, own, your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make with you an everlasting, I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander of the people. That's a very strong type of the Lord Jesus Christ right there. If you can't see that, you need to read back over it because that's that's exactly, David is a type of Christ. But just like every type and shadow in the Old Testament, they only go so far. <clears throat> David was a type of Christ up until the time that he committed adultery with Bathsheba. You, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so every, every type... But David was also a sinner. Uh, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is not a sinner, but there are a lot of... David is a type of Christ. Solomon is a type of Christ. Moses is a type of Christ. Joseph was a type of Christ. And again, the list goes on and on and on. But in every one of those cases, uh, you cannot take those types too far uh, because everyone except the Lord Jesus Christ had a sin nature that needed regulating. Uh, behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not. I'm trying to get down to the part that I wanted to talk about. Um, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not. These shall run unto thee, because the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts well <clears throat> the unrighteous man is to forsake unrighteous thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him now this is talking about returning this is not talking about establishing a relationship he's talking about uh, reestablishing re re fellowship return unto the Lord you can't return unto someone or somewhere you've never been and he will have mercy upon you and, our, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's the good news to know that there is forgiveness with God. And uh, it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So never get to thinking that we can figure out what God's thinking about. <laughs> that's what that's saying. Because his ways, his circuits, and, and it, the scripture does talk about different circuits of the spirit, and, and, the, ways, and the ways that God takes. They're, they're not given for us to understand. He says the things that are revealed belong to us, but the secret things belong to God. Uh, so the things revealed there are in this book, they belong to us. And there are some things that God just does not reveal to us. So the things that are revealed belong to us, and the secret things belong to God. 
So God's ways and his thoughts are much higher than our ways and our thoughts. Even the brightest brain, Albert Einstein or whoever you want to uh, pick, uh, could not even come close to understanding the thoughts and the ways of God. Uh, but what we do have revealed to us is, is uh, very sufficient, should I say. Uh, I'm sufficiently whelmed. Um, I'm not, it's not overwhelming, but we're sufficiently whelmed and tasked to, to understand and pray about what we do have revealed to us. But God's ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and our ways. He says, For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh, maketh it to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Now, here's where I was talking about the, the creed voice of God. He says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. What, it, what that's talking about, he says, just like you have, you have condensation or you have humidity in the, in the sky, and then when it, when it, whatever condition it meets hot air or cold air, it's, you're going to have rain or snow, and it comes. The snow covers the mountains. It melts in the rivers, and and it uh, and it feeds the the reservoirs that are used to water the fields, and it brings. Uh, it it allows us to grow the crops that we have, and I'll tell you that the importance of rain cannot be underestimated. But he says, just like. And then it runs down the river, uh, and it runs into the ocean, and it evaporates back up. It returns exactly where it started. So that's what he's saying there. When God de decrees a thing, it's going to happen. There's, there's no way around it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So <clears throat> he says, For ye shall go out with joy and be led with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So there are some marvelous lessons, I believe, and I know I skimmed over some of that, but there are some marvelous lessons to be had here in, in drawing close to the Lord and uh, and coming and eating and seeking uh, to be fed with the good things of life that the Lord provides us through the gospel, the things that feed uh, uh, the spirit man, uh, the things that cause us to rejoice and to know that our our God is, like, he, there is no God beside him. Behold, the Lord our God is one. Uh, he's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth and all that's therein. Um, he, work, he doeth his will among the armies of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? He's the sovereign of the universe. He, he does what, that which he pleases. Jesus said in one place, can I, not, can I not do what I will with mine own? And if God created it all, and he did, he has a right to do what he wants to do with his own creation. He doesn't have to get my permission or your permission or anyone else's permission to do what he does. But the, the thing that we can understand, he says, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. And, and amen, he shall do that which is right and good. And, and also the good news is that he, he loves his people. And, and he wants to feed you with good things, um, with the truth. Uh, and salvation by grace and forgiveness of sins and deliverance that's to be experienced through the gospel and obedience and the peace, the comfort and the joy and the peace that, that peace that passes understanding can be ours. But we have to, once we conquered in this war, we occupy our place in the kingdom of God and, and seek to be obedient. And one of the ways that, that this begins as taking up our cross and following the Lord in baptism. That's a command. It's not a suggestion. And 
you know, and some of us sometimes we, we probably sit around and say, well, you know, I haven't joined the church because I've got this particular sin in my life. If any of us waited until we never had a sense of sin in our life, nobody would ever join the church. In fact, there's a song that we sing that says, if you tarry till you're better, you'll never come at all. Uh, but crossing, uh, crossing over into the promised land, on the, when you're not a member of the church, it's like you're out in that wilderness of sin, and, and the children of Israel wandered out there for a time and a season. But the day came they entered into the, the promised land. The, Jor, uh, the Lord caused the, the Jordan to, uh, to wall up, and they went over on dry ground. And they came into the promised land. And I believe that the promised land is a type of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't, there may be some, uh, some pieces of it that, that typify heaven and immortal glory, but I think for the most part, crossing, uh, crossing over into the promised land is talking about the church. It's a land that's flowing with milk and honey. And you won't experience that, that part of it until you're obedient to the command to repent and be baptized. Now, I don't. You don't hear a lot of old Baptists talking about repentance, but and it's not just a one-time thing. But Peter says, "Repent and be baptized in the name of the Savior, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ." And that reads, "Repent and be baptized in the name of the Savior anointed for the remission of sins." Uh, we don't get remission of sins when we're baptized. We get baptized in the name of the Savior that's anointed for the remission of sins. Jesus Christ was anointed by the Spirit of God uh, uh, for the remission of sins. That's, But he says, and he wraps up that little piece there in Acts chapter 2 by saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. That particular generation of Israel uh, was about to have the wrath of God poured out upon them. The great tribulation was in, was right at the doorsteps. And they could save themselves from all that trial, tribulation, and everything else by repenting, being baptized, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and entering into the promised land. And we, and if you don't think it's an untoward generation that we're living in, I believe that you, you haven't looked very hard because indeed it is an untoward generation when all, we see all the things that are, uh, that are taking place in our land, uh, the uh, sa uh, sanctioned murder of babies and uh, gay marriage, and, and just, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. We're definitely in an untoward generation, and God's going to judge it. So, but I believe that if we draw near unto God, and if we're obedient, and we, we enter into the promised land, I, it's, and I'm going to say it again, I was reading it just this past week that all those plagues that took place upon Egypt, the children of Israel were in the land of Goshen and none of those things happened to them. And Goshen simply means nearer to God. Nearer to God. Come unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. You want to find rest? You're not going to find it in the world. You're not going to find satisfaction. Satisfaction is only to be had in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and fellowship with him. I thank you all for your good attention as we stand and sing a suitable hymn. If there's one or more here that desire to unite Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.